comes that time in every mandolin's life when it has to change color. <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> oh, you know, this is the one that always makes you or breaks you. You've done all this work. You've done hours and hours and hours of work. And it comes down to this staining and varnishing, which will make it or break it. And I'm, I'm just hoping it's not break it. <laughs> There's a ton of work there. Here's the close-up of the rose. Everything's really pretty on it, I think. I, you know, it's about as good as I can do. All right, well, I, the mo one of the most questions I get, and I'm just going to try to put it right there so you don't miss it this time, it's Phoebing's Leather Dye. Phoebing's Leather Dye. Now, that's how I pronounce it. F-I-E-B-I-N-G-S, Leather Dye. And that's what I use. And, and they have different kinds of leather dye. They have oil-based and different things. These are water alcohol based, if you will. I use alcohol as my solvent because alcohol doesn't raise the grain. What I do is I coat them with the, with the dyes and then I take alcohol and blend it or lighten it. And that's basically what I do with the alcohol. But what I do first, <clears throat> It's just turn it yellow. And you think, yellow? Well, I put that down as a base coat. It seems to work pretty good. Uh, you kind of get a little bit of a gold glow underneath everything else. That's the theory. I'm not sure that's true, really, because, you know, you could probably get by doing it a different way. Uh, I'm sure you could, as a matter of fact. But uh, that's just the way I do it. And no matter how hard you try, you're going to get this stuff on you. This dye gets on you somehow. It just, it just does. It's like when I eat hot dogs and mustard, the mustard's going to get on me somehow. Ketchup doesn't necessarily do that, but mustard will every time. And this is bright, bright yellow. So here we go. You're going to hate it at first. Okay, what I do is I just take a little shop towel, quarter it up, and then I just rub it all over everything. No point in trying to, you know, save your binding. Your binding is going to get dyed, and you just have to go back and scrape it off later. You're just wasting your time if you're trying to avoid getting it on there because you're going to get it on there, and you might as well just live with that. going to use the light brown on this and the reason I'm not is because the light brown has a lot of red tint to it and he doesn't want red so I'm going to use this dark brown. The only reason I know that being colorblind is my wife tells me that so so I'm even the dark brown has some red tint to it I believe. All right so what I'm doing is I'm going to go around when the rag is the wettest I'm going to you know, put the darkest stain around the outside edges. Now keep in mind, this is just dark brown. <clears throat> Looks like heck right now, I know. By the way, we'll do airbrushing later to help blend a lot of this too. That's just rough, obviously. These dyes are pretty forgiving in that you can do a lot with them to change them and put them back and take them off. So now I'm just putting plain old denatured alcohol on the rag and I'm going to work my way out from the center. See there that uh, we've kind of got a uh, sunbursted effect. It Just looking in the viewfinder there, it looks a different, totally different color to me than it does here. <clears throat> Green it looks I don't know, more dull, brownish. Here it looks a little brighter. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if the... Anyway, you know, I'll do this several times before I'm happy with it. And I'm going to let that rest for a little bit, let it dry. I'm going to go to the back now and see what the back looks like. Do something similar to the back. 
I think before I do the back though, I'll go, I'll go ahead and put the yellow up in the, up around the flower a little bit better. So I'm going to dip my brush into a little brown dye and put that in this alcohol so it'll tint it just a little bit. I don't really want it dark. Might need a little more than that. Hard to tell how much you need. Well, it's just not where I want it yet. It takes a while to get these just like you want them. It, uh, it also looks more blended here. Like this looks more blended in real life than it does on camera. On camera, it looks like there's a real dark band, and there is, but it, it looks real abrupt on camera. Where on here, it looks a little more faded into each other. And we just have to keep working on that to improve that look. I'm just kind of getting it all caught up to the same point, and then I'll work on uh, trying to really blend it and make it look the best. It's still too bright. I don't know. I'll just have to work on it. I've gone around and touched up a lot of it. Uh, it's still not where I want it yet, but I've been putting like the dark underneath here and the different places. Now I'm taking, uh, <clears throat> that was black, and now I'm going to take dark brown and go around the inside of these F holes and uh, just touch them up. And you do have to be a little careful because it will run everywhere. It is definitely at the ugly duckly duckling stage again. Uh, you know, it just doesn't look that good. Once we, uh, you know, I'm going to do some more work on blending uh, before I get ready to spray it. But when I start spraying it, I'll spray it with black lacquer first that'll go all the way around this outer edge. I mean, basically, I'm just going to tint the lacquer with the same leather dye, black leather dye. And then I'll spray around these outer edges and the dark areas and try to fade it out with the uh, airbrush. <coughs> it's looking pretty good. It's, it's not exactly where I want it yet, but I'll work on it some more. Well, the mandolin's been sitting and resting for a couple of days, uh, partly because I'm just perplexed on how I'm going to get it to look the way I really want it to look. You know, you got a vision in mind, and it's uh, the wood and these stains have their own vision, and you have a tough time changing them. I'm going to put more yellow here in the middle to bring out more of this. Uh, pattern and uh, see what that does. I don't know. You just I just keep working at it until I get it pretty close. Now you keep in mind that it's going to look totally different once the binding's cleaned off. Uh, it is absolutely normal for the binding to get totally covered like this. If someone has a better method for doing it without screwing up the binding, I'd like to hear it. But I, you know, taping it off is really not a very good option because it's so much detail and it just take you forever to tape it take you as long to tape it as it would to scrape it off so that's not much of an option I'm going to uh, try a little black now around these edges again and darken them up some more I really want the very edges really dark
Brother John He is a poor hard working man His life was hard But he does the best he can He prays to God Just to thank him for his bread And a roof over his head Brother John Lost his wife When the fever came around The gentle girl Oh, we laid her in the ground She was as light And her dying hit him hard Till he heard the voice of God Brother John Trouble on earth is ending All your sorrows soon will be gone You're a good man You did all you could and Otherwise, that may be it, guys I have to have my wife look at it and make sure but that's getting pretty close it's about as good as I think I can do uh, until I hear her feedback so we'll wait and see what that sounds like well it's low light conditions um, I haven't been able to get a second opinion on the um, mandolin I don't know if you can even see it in the dark here but I'm gonna go ahead and put my airbrush to it because I'm tired of waiting. Call and come join me now. He fell beside his plow, brother John. Your trouble on earth is ending. All your sorrow soon will be gone. You were a good man. You did all you could and they're calling you home now. Well, it's 24 hours after I put the first coats on it. I don't think my video is going to turn out where I did the airbrushing. Um, you know, it looks bad right now. I got to be honest. I'm not happy with the blend here. Uh, my wife said the blend's not very good here. The blend on the back, she said, was okay probably, but I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure if it's the the finish that's caused it to look that way or what. I kind of think it blends better than it looks. Um, I don't know. I'm going to work on it and see what I can do. But right now, I think what I'm going to do is clean off the binding. That'll make me feel better about the whole thing because the binding just makes it look terrible. Home now, brother John. Just a whole lot more of that to do. I interrupt this video to show you two things. First of all, I got a nice Christmas note from Don in Easley, South Carolina. He also sent me a nice monetary contribution, and he just said he wanted to thank me for the videos. He watches them all the time, and uh, he says, please keep making these videos. Don, thank you very kindly. I appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you as well. Thank you. The other thing I wanted to show you is that this just arrived. What is this? Well, let's take a look. It is the mandolin case that I ordered for this mandolin. Um, you know, I you know, in I'd never seen one of these before, and and you know, I got to be honest, uh, it I thought this uh, cover would be a real nice thing, but on first opening it, this cover is a little awkward to get into and everything. It's kind of. But it's just mainly to protect the case. You don't have to have the cover on it, but it's kind of nice. I mean, it's it's a nice heavy cover in the case, and everything is really heavy. It's a Superior CS1520, I think is what they call it. And uh, it's supposed to be a vintage type style case. So let's see here, what does it look like? It's a real nice, pretty case. Let's just see how the mandolin fits down in there. Hopefully it fits, because it's one of those kind that's very, very <laughs> tightly made. Oh wow, it fits like a glove. Perfect. I like it. It's real nice, heavy duty case. Um, you know, it, I'm sure it's imported. I'm sure it's from overseas, that type of thing. It's made by Superior. But it's gotta be one of their top of the line for the mandolin. It's a pretty case. I think it'll do just fine. You know, I, on looking at it here, some of the uh, taping around the edges is loose, and I, you know, it's it's aggravating. You pay that good money for something, and it it's a little loose around here, and I don't have time to send it back. So, 
you know, I guess we're just going to have to tape that up. I got this at Beyond Guitars. Um, there's the information. It was a $235 case. They charged me tax on it, and I'm not sure why, because it came from California. But they charged me $20 tax, which I don't think was right. Anyway, it was $255 total, shipped to the door. So let's, uh, it is what it is. It's a nice case. It's the case that's going to go with this mandolin. I'm just going to see if I can't try to glue up these spots here that are loose. It's kind of a shame that they can't come in better shape. Just in case you were wondering, I'm still scraping binding. And of course, you got to be very careful scraping it. Otherwise, you scrape off finish off of the wood, and then you got to touch that back up. So far, knock on wood, I don't think I've made any big mistakes. Still scraping binding. I know you don't have a reference of time, but it's been a couple hours. And, uh, you know, it just takes a while. I'll keep at it. Still scraping binding. Well, I've done everything I can do with the single edge razor blade. Now I'm taking this exacto uh, knife and I'm getting down into these tighter areas, which will be hard for you to see, but anyway, you just have to uh, use whatever tool you can use to scrape the binding clean. Another little thing I've learned over the years is the back edge of the uh, blade is flat and sharp you can use it as a scraper when you get into really tight places like this where the blade would be too wide to stick out you just take the back edge of the blade and just slide it against there and it will scrape it pretty clean you know it you wouldn't want to do a lot of area this way but these small tight areas are work pretty good that way Well, finally I'm down to using this little deal for the final detail scrapings. This stuff around this top edges here, it's uh, tough to scrape off without causing a problem. I wonder how the big factories do these kinds of things where they don't have so much. I can't believe they pay somebody to do all this. They must have another method. The mandolin has been drying over the course of a week and uh, it's <coughs> in person here everybody says it's looking great. When I look at it on the monitor I'm still not seeing the same thing. So, I don't know. It's weird why the lighting and the monitor affects it different. I don't know. Hopefully, it's coming through on the video where it looks halfway decent. But it's really looking pretty here. I put about 10 coats of lacquer on the mandolin. And uh, it's been sitting about four days and drying. And so, we're going to go ahead and lightly sand the uh, top coats off and see if we can't level that out. I usually do it with 400 wet or dry paper. But... Uh, I've got 400 uh, regular sandpaper from Lowe's, the kind that's non-stick, the, the kind that doesn't build up. So I'm going to use that. I've used it before on finish. It works real good. I, I don't happen to have the wet or dry in stock at the moment. So we're going to try this and see how well it works. If it doesn't work, we'll go to something else.
been quite a bit of sanding. <clears throat> you can see the process and we just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. Well friends, we're down to the wire. That means we're ready to start putting this baby together and uh, it's, uh, it's got to be buffed out yet, cleaned up a little bit, the fretboard's not really in final form yet, uh, the neck hasn't got any finish on it yet, and uh, so we've got to, in other words, the neck, we left it just kind of plain. Uh, we're going to make it a, a bare neck with uh, staining, but I've got to put the staining on it and all that stuff yet too. So we got a little bit of work to do, but hopefully by this afternoon, this thing will be playable. And that's a good thing because the customer is driving all the way up here from Louisiana tomorrow in the morning to pick it up. No pressure, no pressure. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is strip all the overspray off. This is just lacquer that's got oversprayed onto the neck, even though I didn't really try to hit the neck, it just overspray hits it. Okay, I've got it stripped off around here in a straight line around there. Uh, when I get it black, yeah, I don't think you'll even be able to tell hardly where the line is because <clears throat> we'll stain it back. Now we have to clean it all off up in here. I'm trying to decide if I want to go all the way back to the line of the body, which is probably what I'll do. Uh, I think that'll just be cleaner looking. I've got to film the rest of this. I'm just basically scraping it off smooth. Then I'm going <clears> to <throat> sand it and then we'll color it. So I'll bring you back when we get started on the coloring. I got the neck all scraped down the way I want it and I've taped off a little bit of the binding and stuff in hopes that I won't get so much dye on the binding and have to clean all the binding again, which probably will happen anyway. But I thought I'll try taping a little bit of it off to see if that helps. Generally speaking, this dye doesn't care about tape, <laughs> but I figure it'll help a little. I think I'm gonna use a paintbrush. I, I normally put these dyes on with rags, but in this particular case, I think to be a little more accurate and, and to, to not get the dye everywhere, I'm going to try to use a paintbrush, and then I'll uh, blend it with rags and alcohol and stuff. Kind of like that, you know, I'm just, it's about uh, two parts guesswork and maybe eight parts experience here is what I'm working with. I'm going to put some denatured alcohol on this little cloth here, it's just plain alcohol, and uh, now I'm going to uh, start uh, spreading it here and, and buff and trying to blend it. See, it's already starting to look pretty cool. It's looking a lot better, see? I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little clean up now, get rid of the tape and stuff, and we'll see what she looks like.
Well, I've got all the preliminary work finished uh, just prior to stringing it up. So now I'm going to go buff it out real good and uh, well actually I'm going to sand it lightly first with like 1200 and uh, just to level it out a little bit more and then we're going to buff it out and string it up. Once over with the 600 grit sandpaper, it's just kind of a light sanding to kind of level things out still. And now I'm going to go over it with 1200, a pretty rigorous uh, 1200. I'm not going to film the 1200. Just got her up to pitch. That's really the first time I raked it all the way across. Oh yeah, I'm liking it. First chord right here. Oh yeah, she's got it.
stretch and juice. Can't even stay in tune yet, but uh, boy, it's going to be a punchy son of a gun. Oh my goodness. I'm already in love. too low yeah definitely on the bass side here it's a little too low I'm gonna loosen the strings and raise the bass side up just a little bit we rushed it a little bit I would have liked to get in at least one more week to dry but uh, you know it is what it is Christmas is here and I'm sure he's anxious and I oh my gosh it's killer I just wish that little camera had a decent microphone where you could really hear it. Oh my goodness. so much bottom end it ain't even funny. Wow. Yeah, if he doesn't like this, that's okay. I'll just keep it because it's awesome. <laughs> Loosen the strings up on it, let it set overnight, and then I'll uh, play it tomorrow, give it a little bit of rest in time here. I'm just going to loosen the strings about half tension and let it set overnight, and then we'll play it for you tomorrow to see what it really sounds like. <laughs> well, just for the chronological order of things, uh, I spent all day yesterday, which was Monday the 18th, working on the mandolin, getting it ready to play, you know sanding it out level, buffing it out, uh, staining the neck, just doing all kinds of things that you'll see in the clip, I'm sure, already. But uh, it took all day, literally, to get it ready. And when I got it strung out, I was strung up, I was already wore out, so I just strung it up, played a little bit of a tune on it, and know that it's an awesome sound of mandolin. and I am absolutely tickled with it. It's that proud papa moment when the baby is born, you know, and uh, man, I'm really, I couldn't be happier. It, it turned out just like I wanted it to turn out in terms of sound especially. So, it is now Tuesday morning, uh, the 19th. I've just tuned it back up to pitch. It even sounds better today to me, <laughs> so I can't wait to play it for you. Here's what she looks like in final. Um... Oh, I can hear, you know, through the magic of Christmas and the, through the video camera, I can hear you screaming. It's not finished yet. I, oh, yeah, I know what you're saying. You're saying it doesn't have a truss uh, rod cover. Look what the elves did last night in my shop. Look right here. Oh, my, you won't believe it. They made that little truss rod cover. Isn't that special? Merry Christmas to you, Robert. That's a little extra I threw in there for you. There you go. That's what she looks like with the truss rod cover in place. And it kind of matches the cross that's back here. I thought that was a nice little addition there. And there's what she looks like on the back. Again, I don't think the colors match exactly. It's not just the colors. It's the blend from the dark to the color. It just doesn't show the blend as well. But uh, that's okay. It's just the way it is. And maybe it's this light I'm using. I don't know. But uh, it does look much better, I think, here in person than, than what I'm seeing on screen. I always try to ev put everything in perspective. This finish is nowhere near cured. Uh, it's still soft. You can dent it real easy. Um, all that. It needs at least another month. And I'm going to suggest to the customer that they don't keep it in the case either. That they, What I suggest is you store it laying flat on the fretboard like this and then let it just sit on a, you know, someplace that it won't get damaged and let it just air dry 
for another month anyway. That'll help it a lot. And the sound will just get much more punchy and you know better as it dries. But it's got a good sound already. I was gonna play uh, another version of Blue Christmas and uh, bluegrass it up a little bit, but uh, I've decided I want you to hear the mandolin better, so I thought I'd try to do some sort of a Christmas instrumental. I haven't practiced this. Uh, we About two weeks ago, we played it in one jam session, and of course that doesn't give you much practice on a tune that you only play once a year and that you've probably only played it once in your life. So <laughs> this maybe is my second, third time I've ever tried to play this. Nowhere near perfect on my part, but the mandolin I think sounds real good. I hope that comes across for you. Oh, what the heck. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. I'll be so blue just thinking about you. Decorations of red. On a green Christmas tree Well, they won't be the same, dear If you're not here with me And when those blue snowflakes start falling That's when those blue memories start calling and you'll be doing all right with your Christmas of white. But I'll have a blue, blue Christmas.
had a very successful evening last night playing the mandolin for its first time out. Uh, we had a jam at the restaurant and uh, I played this thing all evening uh, due to the gracious owner saying, I want you to play it. I want you to, I want to sit back and listen to it. So, uh, man, I had fun playing this thing. And it, I'll tell you, it cut through and I was just really happy with it. And I just hope the owners is happy. Well, here he is and I'll let him just say what he wants to say. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, a while back I brought some instruments up to uh, have Jerry work on them. And while I was here, I got a chance to see the, some of the mandolins he built and listen to him play. And I commissioned him to build this mandolin and I couldn't be happier. Uh, and it's been such a treat to watch all the videos and watch it come to life a little at a time. And the final product is just awesome. I just can't say enough about it. The, the finish is beautiful. Uh, every aspect of it, it sounds incredible. I got to listen to Jerry play it last night. And the tone, the volume, uh, the clarity is, it just blows my mind. I mean, I've listened to quite a few mandolins and it, it sounds really, really great. And I appreciate all the work he did on it. And I just couldn't be happier. And thanks, Jerry. Appreciate it. Thank you, Robert. Robert's from Louisiana, and uh, that's where this mandolin's going to be headed back to. He's going to be going on the road. I just want to thank you for watching the series on building this mandolin, and uh, I've had a lot of nice compliments on it all the way through. I couldn't be more pleased with the way it turned out, especially in terms of the sound. And uh, I know it's going to be a really, really fine mandolin that he'll be able to cherish down the road. I want to wish each and every single one of you a Merry Christmas and a very wonderful New Year. I hope that everything goes wonderful for you in the New Year and that you are healthy, wealthy, and wise, and prosper. God bless you all. Thanks for watching my channel. We'll see you on the next video.